Hello everyone, so welcome to my videos. So in this video, so we will work on the test on the mean of a normal distribution. But now the variance, the population variance is uh, unknown here. So in our previous lecture, we already talked about how we can do a test of the mean of a normal distribution when the sigma, the variance is unknown. So on that one, it means we will do the z test. Uh, in this one, when the variance is not known, so similar to the point estimation, what we will do is we will use the information of our sample to substitute the value of our variance. So because uh, for the standard deviation of the population, the point estimator of this one is a sample standard deviation. So what we will do, we will use this S to substitute the value of our sigma. But here, this, uh, in fact, it will change to two cases. So the first one is if our sample size is large enough. So here in this uh, video and lecture, we will require n is a greater or equal to 30. We think this is uh, large enough. But of course, it's in your research, if you require some more uh, accurate uh, situation, then your value of n may be become larger. Okay, so if this n is uh, larger or equal to 30, if our sample size is large enough, then what we can do by the central limiting theorem, we know when we use the s to replace our value of sigma, we will get, so by this one, we will get our z0 is equal x bar minus mu0 divided by s, over square root of n. So this is still a standard normal distribution. And then similar to our previous uh, lectures uh, with a uh, test about the mean of a normal distribution when the variance is known. So based on our new formula for z0, we will still have the similar steps to do our z test. And then the second case is if our sample, our sample size is not large enough. So here in this case is if our n is smaller than 30. So what should we do? So in this case, we still have similar equations, x bar minus mu zero divided by s over square root of n. But the problem is this one is not a normal distribution. Instead of this normal distribution, this, in fact, is a t-distribution. So this is if, in this case, uh, we call this as a t-test. So we will uh, use the table of our t-distribution to help us uh, give a conclusion. Should we reject our uh, non-hypothesis H0 or we fail to reject it? So now I will give the condition when should we reject our H0? So the first uh, one I want to work at is if we have a two-size test. So for two-size test, when we have our H0 is as mu equal mu0, then for two-size test, this means our H1 is a in equation. So now we have mu is not equal zero. So in this case, we will reject our H0 when the absolutely value of our t0 is larger than our alpha, our t sub alpha over 2 and n minus 1. So here, of course, alpha is a given in the question. And because here we work on the two side test, so that's why we have this is a t sub alpha over 2. So this is about the, our value of t. And we can also use the p-value to help us decide should we reject H0 or not. So here in the two size test, the value of our, the p-value is a probability of two side, two case. One is a capital T0 is greater than the absolute value of our T0. And the other is uh, the probability of our capital T0 is smaller 
the negative of this value of t zero. If this sum of the probability is smaller or equal to alpha, then we will reject our non hypothesis h zero. So then this is for the two size ties. If we want to work on the one size ties, we have two cases. The first one is when we have the mu is greater than our mu zero. In this case, uh, we will reject our H0 if we have our T0 is greater than our T sub alpha n minus 1. So here we work on the uh, one side. So that's why here we have this is T sub alpha instead of T sub alpha over 2. And also our H1 is work for the mu greater than mu 0. So if you look at the graph of our t uh, distribution, this is work on the right tile. So that's why here the value of our t alpha uh, comma n minus 1 is a positive number. That's why in this case, we don't need the absolute value here. And also, similar to the previous two size ties, we can also use the p-value to help us decide uh, we should reject H0 or not. So in this case, for this one tile, one side test, we will have p-value is equal to the probability of our capital zero greater than our small t zero. So if this probability of this p-value is smaller or equal to our alpha, then we should reject our h zero. So this is about the one side case, a uh, one side test when mu is greater than mu zero. On the other one, when mu is smaller than mu zero, so when mu is smaller than mu zero, we will reject our h zero if we have the value of our t zero is smaller than the negative of our t sub alpha, comma n minus one. So here, because it's still a one side test, so we still use the t sub alpha. And then to this uh, p-value, this is a probability of our capital T0 is smaller than the negative of our absolute value of T0. So if our p-value is smaller than alpha, then we will reject our H0. So this is about the, uh, when should we reject our H0 for both two side ties and one side ties. And now let's us uh, look at some examples. So this question is for a one side test. So now we have the non hypothesis H zero is mu equal mu zero, and now we work on the H one when mu is greater than our mu zero. So here we give two value. One is about our T zero. This is equal one point eight six three. So here we already got the uh, uh, statistic, t, t statistic here. We already compute this one. And we also know the information of our sample size. Our sample size is 16. So in this case, the question asks us, what is the p-value if we want to reject our uh, H0? So by this one, if we look at our equation or our situation for reject our uh, H0, what we should do is we should look at the, uh, the, this case. So here, if we have our equation, one is we have this uh, T0 is larger than our T, uh, T alpha comma n minus 1, or we have our p-value is smaller or equal to alpha, we should reject our H0. So in the question, they already give us the value of our T0. And based on this uh, inequality, T0 greater than T alpha comma n minus one, we can get the value of our T alpha comma n minus one. And then what we can do is we can look at the T table. When we get, uh, know the value of our T sub alpha n minus one, what we can do is look at the t table. We can find the value of our alpha. 
And then when we get the value of our alpha, we can move to the next uh, equation, the relationship between our p value and alpha. So by this one, we will get a range of our p value. So here in the question, the first thing is to solve this question. Of course, we need to get the value of our n minus 1. So in this case, because n is equal 16, so that's why the n minus 1 is equal 15 in this question. And of course, we know our t0 is 1.863. So that's why here we will have our alpha, uh, t alpha comma n minus 1. So this t alpha comma n minus 1 should uh, give us the value of t alpha comma n minus 1. This should smaller than our t0 is equal 1.863. So that's why in this case, we will have our uh, range of our t alpha is a uh, some value smaller than 1.836. Then let us look at our t table. By the t table, we will have by t table. Mm, let me write on this step. So now by uh, t table, we will get the range of our alpha. So here the range of alpha is alpha is between zero point zero two five and 0 0.05 so if we have our uh, uh, alpha is between this range then what sh we will have so in this case we will know our p value should smaller than our alpha so that's why for our p value this will lies in the range 0 0.02 uh, the same range here so that's how we can find the p-value to reject our h0 for the given information. So this is the end of our video and please subscribe uh, this uh, video and also click the bell. So next time when I post a new video, you will get a notification. So see you in the next video.